الله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يحده الله فلا مضل له ومن يدلل فلا حادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله Indeed, O praise and glory belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise Him, we seek His aid and His forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from the evils inside of us and from our evil actions. Whomsoever Allah guides, none can lead astray. And whomsoever Allah leads astray, none can guide. I testify that none has the right to be worshipped with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is one and he has no partners. And I testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is his servant and final messenger to the whole of mankind. My respected brothers in Islam, Alhamdulillah, or praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has given us this blessed day of Eid al-Adha, a day of celebration, a day of smiling, a day of spending time with our loved ones. And when we contrast this Eid with the last Eid of Eid al-Fitr, what we see is something totally different. Last time we were in our homes praying Eid Salah alone. It felt strange, it felt very odd. But now we are together as a community praying Eid Salah, alhamdulillah. Of course our families are not here, of course we're wearing masks and these kind of things, not quite the same thing. But it is alhamdulillah much better than the last Eid this is a mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is a reminder of the masjid the masjid is the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and our purpose in life is to worship Allah and the heart of this worship is the masjid is the masjid is the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so the first point is the reminder of the importance of this masjid and our requirement to support these beautiful houses and the people around them inshallah so when you consider this Eid al-Adha then whose story is this a life of? This is a story of the life of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam. Ibrahim alayhi salam. And when you look at his life, and you look at one word that describes his life, it is the word of sacrifice. Struggle and sacrifice. This is the Eid of Adha, this is the Eid of sacrifice. The life of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam was a life of sacrifice and of struggle. Let us remind ourselves a few points about his sacrifice and his struggle. He, alayhi salam, when Tawheed came to him, he confronted his whole community. His whole community was stooped in shirk. This was one man against a whole nation. This is a struggle. When you try and give da'wah, try to invite people to Islam, it's hard. But imagine you're alone against everybody. This is a struggle of Sayyidina Ibrahim, alayhi salam. The people closest to him, his family, his father. You know the, father, the relationship of a father and son is something truly special. We say in our culture that your father, he has his hand over your head. When he had his hand over your head, you feel protected. You know, your father is there, he's looking after you. This is so important, the right of a father. Look back as a young boy when you were growing up and everything your father did for you. His father said to him, Ya Ibrahim, if you don't stop, I'm going to stone you to death. And he meant it. Imagine confronting and his father, I'm going to stone you to death. And what did Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam say? Assalamu alaikum. This is the sacrifice and the struggle of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam. When they wake the fire and the fire is roaring and they're going to throw him in the fire, he doesn't flinch. Imagine. I mean, what's the worst we can think of? A person goes to prison. Horrible. We're frightened. All this. But Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam is going to be thrown into a fire and he sees it. And his demand doesn't waver for a second. This is sacrifice. This is struggle. Then they evict him from his land. Again, we live in a time of corona. People are worried about their jobs, and naturally so. But Sayyidina Ibrahim is thrown out of his land, his job, his house, his family, his look, everything goes. This is a struggle of Sayyidina Ibrahim. He continues, he has to debate with the king. Imagine being in front of a king and his courtiers and you're debating and arguing, it's not easy. It's not easy to speak the truth in front of a tyrant. The struggle of Ibrahim alayhi salam. He has to go to Mecca and leave his wife Hajar and his son Ismail in the burning desert. He leaves them. Imagine taking a wife in a lonely place, all alone, nothing, no food, no what, and saying, no, I'm leaving you now for the sake of Allah. This is a struggle. And towards the later part of his life, when he's old and his beautiful son is there. 
This is not any son. This is a prophet, Ismail alayhi salam. And he's commanded to sacrifice, and he takes a sword to sacrifice his son. This is the struggle of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam. And when we remind ourselves of these struggles, then we then learn from them. And we then superimpose them upon our lives. Because this dunya is a place of struggle and of test. This dunya, just as Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam struggled, and Rasulullah alayhi salam struggled, and all of the Anbiya, and all of the companions, and all of the scholars, they struggle. Where is our struggle? For the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where is our struggle? They didn't struggle for family. They didn't struggle for name. They didn't struggle for wealth. They struggled only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah says in Quran, Surah Al-Kahf, the Surah we recite every Jummah. Indeed, we have placed what is on this earth as an adornment to see which of you is best in action. This whole dunya is just a, it's a, it's a test for us. Allah is testing us. Which of us is best in action? This is true. Every single the angels are recording our deeds. This whole life is a test. And many of us, we go through life oblivious of this fact. No. On the day of judgment, everything will be brought forward. Your eyes, what did they see? Your hands, what did they hold? Your feet with everything. This life is a test. And so we ask ourselves, how are we doing in this test? Allah says in Quran, oh, save yourselves and your families from a fire whose fuel is men and stone. Save yourself. You know, this, on the day of judgment, no one's going to intercede. Your father will not step forward. Your mother, your child will not, I don't know. He didn't pray because of me. No, you're going to be all alone. You're going to be all alone. You and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be questioning you. And so we ask ourselves in terms of this life, how are we doing? In my present situation, how is my tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? I'm making sure I don't fall into any kind of shirk with Allah. Because shirk is the sin most hated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm not going into any kind of shirk, any kind of worshipping a person, elevating them to a high rank, going to the dead and asking them for something. No, shirk is the greatest sin. So I ask myself first of all, and my respected brothers, how are we in terms of tawheed and shirk? Where am I in terms of salah? Remember, the first thing you'll be asked on your whole qiyamah is the salah. The first thing, the last thing Rasulullah reminded his ummah of, as salah, as salah. And the first thing, on the day, as salah, as salah. And if your salah is missing, the hadith continues, everything will be lacking. How is my salah? How is my Quran? Rasulullah said in Quran, so Furqan, oh my Lord, my people, they abandoned this Quran. Imagine, they abandoned this Qur'an. They never looked at the speech of Allah subhanahu wa We spend hours, hours, hours on our phone every day, mindless. Our eyes glazed over. Yes, this celebrity, this football, hours. Look at your screen time. The average person spends hours. If we spent a tenth of that time on the Qur'an, where would we be today? But no, what are we doing? So we ask ourselves in this sense, how am I doing in these actions of ibadah? How am I doing in controlling my sins? Today is Eid, it's the hottest day of the year. If today you're going to enjoy Eid with the Jama'ah, then you're going to have food, nice food with your family. And in the evening, you're going to drive down to the city center to look at everybody. SubhanAllah, you're ruining your Eid. Young man, I know it's difficult, I know you have desires, but this ruins your deeds, this is your sins overtaking you. So where are you in terms of fighting yourself and your nafs in terms of your desires? And in yourself, where are you in terms of your family? Your respect of your parents. Look at Sayyidina Ibrahim salam and his father. This is an example to you. And an example. Once they're gone, they're gone. And they are amongst the greatest door of Jannah. Amongst the greatest door of Jannah is being good to your parents. After today, the first people you should go and see is your mother and your father. You should pick, how are you? How are you? Imagine an Eve when they won't be there maybe one day. What will you do, oh man? This is the rank of your parents. Your wife, who's always the best of you, is the one who's best to his family. Our wives have temperaments, they have behaviors, they have attitudes. We are different. They are like a curved rib. This is the nature. This is the nature of the female. Be patient and be good to your wives and your child and your children. The best thing a person gives to a child is a good education. A good, ed learn them of being. So in terms of ourselves, how are we, in terms of ourselves, 
our families and our communities. And I want to look at one thing, visiting the sick. Visiting the sick is so important. You know, in this time in coronavirus, many people have been in a home by themselves, many old people. I have seen old people in their homes that maybe their wife has passed away and their children have gone and no one visits them. No one visits them. Where is their right? You know, mental illness is one of the huge things. And we're so busy in our lives and we don't go and visit the sick. In the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Allah will say on Yom al Qiyamah, I was sick and you didn't visit me. I was sick and you didn't visit me. And the slave will say, Oh Allah, you are the Lord of the heaven and the earth. How could you be sick? How could I visit you? Allah will say, Didn't you know such and such a slave of mine was sick? Had you visited him, you would have found me by his side. You would have found me by his side. In these last three or four months, many old people are at home. No one visits them. They, they, all they have is a TV. That's all they have. They, got, they have TV. And we, what are we doing? We're the rights of others. And we could continue forever. So these, we we'll look back at the life of Sayyidina Ibrahim and we close with one verse in Quran. Close with one verse in Quran to keep the khutbah short. So the Nahar, verse 97, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Whoever does good deeds, whilst be male or female, Whilst being a believer, we will give him a good life and we will reward him with the best of what he used to do. When you are like this and you pray your salah and you control your desires and you visit the sick and you're good to, you will have a good life. Like Sheikh Ibn said, Jannah is in my heart, what can my enemies do to me? In this life, you will be at peace, you will be content, you will accept your qadr, you will smile. You will smile. Not these long faces we have all the time. You will be content. Allah will give you a good life. The people will respect you. You will have honor. Allah will tell Jibra'il alayhi salam. Jibra'il alayhi salam will tell the angels. And they come to the earth and the people will love you. The people will, this is a good life. And then in the akhirah, you will have al-jannah. Al-jannah. An eternity. Not a day, not a week. Not the Eid will pass. Celebration passes. You know, Jannah is forever, forever. And the greatest thing in Jannah, nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah, forget the mansions, forget the Quran, and forget the food of it. Oh yeah, 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 amazing. What no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no heart has imagined, but all of this is nothing compared to the nearness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine, nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. اللهم اغفرنا ذنوبنا وكفرنا سيئاتنا اللهم اقنا عذاب الدنيا وعذاب الآخرة اللهم اغفر للمؤمن المؤمنات والمسلم المسلمات ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار My dear brothers, please mubarak, kabul Allah minna minko, jazak khair for coming. We all know the rules, please try and refrain from shaking hands and hugs. We would love to hug you for the sake of Allah, but we know it's best, inshallah. Jazak khair for your sabr and your patience.